Behind closed doors, many suspect a war is brewing between America and China, with the battle lines drawn in cyberspace. Wan Tao trains the next generation of warriors as a self-described godfather of this country's hacker world. A decade ago, Wan, codenamed Eagle, says he hacked and shut down the White House website, one of his casualties, he says, during that era's U.S.-China cyber wars. It was a way to make our voices heard, he says. So we, we have a friend. So this, oh, this is where you have friends, yeah. hacker friends. Yeah. These days, it seems everyone is hacking. Yet Chinese hackers have been blamed for high-profile attacks, targeting governments, financial institutions, and Fortune 500 companies like Google. Wan says he doesn't know anyone who was involved in those attacks, and in fact, there's no evidence any were launched from China. But he and other IT specialists here understand what motivates many Chinese hackers, a key driver, they say, growing pride in China. One motivation for Chinese hackers is nationalism, and where they identify with China as a country and the government, whereas most American hackers might actually have a negative bias towards quote-unquote patriotic causes. Wan has done his share of nationalist hacking. During his heydays, he used technologies to identify weaknesses on websites and computers before infecting systems with a virus or Trojan horse. Did you ever feel bad about it? No, no. You feel like you are the freest person and you have the power, he says, to change the world. Many experts believe that China's hackers are some of the most sophisticated in the world, but the government here says that it's cracking down on their illegal activities with a contingent of cyber police. The government has vehemently denied it's behind any cyber attacks and says it's unfairly singled out by its critics. It maybe plays into this larger narrative, you know, at least in the U.S., of the China threat of, you know, China posing an economic, um, you know, perhaps a longer-term military threat. Wan now works at an IT company in Beijing's version of Silicon Valley. The government didn't support us, he says, but he says it didn't and couldn't stop them either. Eunice Yoon, CNN, Beijing.